Resolved that eight hours shall constitute a legal day's work from and after May 1st, 1886. The Union is behind us, we shall not be moved. The Union is behind us, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, we shall not be moved. So began the great struggle for the eight-hour day. Building the Union wasn't easy. Years of bloody confrontations between labor and capital were to follow. 1886, the Haymarket story. Men on both sides died when the Cormac Harvester Company used hired goons to lock out strikers asking for an eight-hour day. 1892, Homestead Steel. Henry C. Frick cuts pay rates in his mills. Steel workers strike. Pinkertons are brought in. Workers and strike breakers killed. The strike is broken. 1894, Chicago. The Pullman Railroad Union calls a strike. 100,000 workers join in a sympathy protest. Federal troops retaliate. Workers starve into submission. 1902, finally, a breakthrough. There was 100,000 of us miners, and we kept the mines closed all summer. The owners wouldn't talk, refused to arbitrate. It took the President of the United States, Mr. Theodore Roosevelt, to appoint a commission. We went back to work five days later, and five months after that got shorter days and a 10% raise. Not bad. I guess you could say we won that one. 